What is the call part of the hammer used for? For removing nails, right? Okay, so continuing on with our bench. Continuing on with our fasteners information. Okay, guys. So you have the claw hammer, right? It's the most common hammer. This part is used for removing nails. What I wanted to go over today is basic using of it and some things to keep in mind. Okay, so a lot of times when you're bent or when you're pounding in a nail, sometimes it'll actually get bent. Okay? So when you hit it, it might bend off from the wrong direction. Sometimes you're actually able to straighten it back out. A lot of times what ends up happening, not so much with this. Type of nail. Does anyone remember what this type of nail is called? It's quite a long one. Spike. Common. Okay, so this is your common nail. Okay. So you have your common nail. Okay. So you can tell by the shank; it's a little bit thicker, and then also has a thicker head. You have this other nail here. Does anyone remember what I'm thinking? Finish something. That flathead. Okay. So if this is a finishing, then what's this? Finishing. This is a finishing nail. Okay. So this one is go is a casing nail. Okay. So you can tell it has a little same thing has a little bit larger diameter shank. Okay. And the head is smaller as well. Okay. So it has a finished head on it, so it's actually harder to see. Um, so just again refresh you have the shank, which and then uh, does anyone remember what the diameter or how you classify diameter for those. Pennies. pennies is the actual length. Okay. So penny deals with like individual nails, but when you have nails like for a nail gun or a finishing nail, they're called the gauge. Okay. So the gauge is basically the diameter of the shank. Okay. So again you have your common nail, your casing, and then you have your finished nail. Okay. Now, one of the things that ends up happening, right, when you want to take this nail out, is you end up pulling on this, right, and a lot of times you end up having something like this taking place. You sit there, you struggle, you kind of almost look a little bit like a fool, right, because you're sitting there trying so hard. What is one of the things, not only do you kind of look like a fool a little bit, but what's when I grab the door? What's another thing that ends up happening with your material when you're doing that? You're denting it, right? Okay. So when you end up um, having to pull out a nail, okay, it's easiest to end up pulling it out to a point where you kind of stop, and then this is the part where you start, you know, trying to reef on it and whatnot. But you end up putting a scrap block underneath. What does that do underneath that? It gives, it gives you more leverage, but it also does what? Well. This, this it doesn't damage your material, right? Okay, so if I have just a scrap piece and I have to end up pulling a little bit harder, okay, so now the only damage that's left is just the hole, okay? So if I'm using the same hole over, I can end up putting the nail back in. Um, does anyone know what this is called? Oh. Okay, it's used for removing nails. Yes. What is what is that? The cat's paw, right? Yeah. Okay. So what ends up happening with with a nail that basically is finished? If you say you've gone through and you pounded it, and you come back a day later, or you were just got a little bit excited and pounded it all the way, and found out, dang it, it's in the wrong one. It's in the wrong spot. Um, this is more for construction, but I just want to bring it to you guys' attention. Now what ends up happening is you actually take this and you basically gouge underneath the wood and that ends up giving you just enough leverage so that you can end up pulling it out. So the way that you use this, the downside with this is yes, you can, bring, you can get the nail out. But the downside you can see that it actually ends up damaging your material. So again, this isn't necessarily a problem um, for basically 
framing for construction, like if you're building a stud wall, because what ends up, what eventually ends up going over? Drywall. Drywall or some sort of other finishing OSB, things like that. Okay? So, that's just something I wanted to, the big thing that I want you guys to take away from this is making sure you guys use a scrap block of wood. Okay. So make sure that you guys use a scrap block of wood underneath um, the hammer head or the hammer so that you can act, end up protecting your material. It ends up giving you a little bit better leverage. And one of the other things that doesn't end up happening is if I line these up, what do you guys notice? It's bent. Yeah, this one's bent. You can kind of see how it's bent at an angle. So that means that someone, same thing, they got to this point, and then they were reefing on it, and they were reefing so hard that the nail was stuck in there that actually, if you look, it actually bent the head of the hammer. Part of it, what's that? She asked if you could bend it back. Um, not really. Your best bet is just pretty much throw this out, because otherwise now you're, I mean, unless you hold it down here like this, it's just going to be awkward. So really this is just a demonstration hammer now. Um, but these were just cheap hammers because we just bought all of them all at once. Um, but just like I said, be careful for your material and extra leverage. Um, so that's the basics of it. You guys can go ahead and work.